Hello everybody, we are here and we are doing the Western Conference Final Preview between the Dallas Stars and the Vegas Golden Knights. So if you're new to me, you're new to hockey, whatever the case may be, feel free to subscribe before the video, but if not, no big deal. Having said that, let's talk about these two teams and some storylines to follow for this series. So uh, starting off, Dallas, of course, able to get here by beating the Minnesota Wild in six games and the Seattle Kraken in seven games. As for the Vegas Golden Knights, they got here by beating the Winnipeg Jets in five games. And then, of course, they ended up getting through the Edmonton Oilers in six games. And here we are now. So what are some storylines here to talk about for this series? The first one is, is there a king of the hill? So Vegas has dealt with a lot of injuries this year, especially in net, and it seems like it'll strike again as Laurent Brassois is apparently not going to play or is expected not to be able to play for the conference final. So now we get to see if Aiden Hill can come in here and show what he is capable of to keep the machine chugging along to the Stanley Cup final. Hill's played 101 regular season games at the top level of hockey, and has varying results by season. He's 27 and he has already played four three teams at this age. But the good news for him is he is coming off of one of his best years yet is he actually posted his best quality start percentage in his career at 640 or 64 percent of his starts. He's getting quality start percentage which is a good thing in his first year in Sin City and he just got his first cup of coffee regarding postseason play and did really well for the most part. He had a 934 save percentage and really only had one bad game out of the five games he played in and I think that was because Edmonton ended up having like two or three power play goals at least in that game uh, but in general you're looking at this seeing that he stopped 38 out of 40 shots in an elimination game against the Oilers and that's great. Now the same couldn't be said um, about what could happen here in the conference final considering how Dallas ended up beating the Vegas Golden Knights a few years ago, but I don't exactly think that that correlates to anything too much here, uh, but we will see. And is Hill going to be tested by Dallas? Absolutely. Yes, as the Stars just have like six players that have scored 20 plus goals this season, and a guy named Jason Robertson who scored 46 during the regular season is on an eight game goal drug so you know he is looking to break loose and kind of get things going along for himself will he do so against hill that'll be one of the biggest talking points here as i'm itching to see how hill can do and if he's able to help vegas out here as for the second storyline we're going to see if alex petrangelo can keep his cool and uh, exactly what could happen here for Dallas to possibly get him to have a little bit of an outburst. So recently we saw Alex Petrangelo get a nice one game suspension in the second round for deciding to give Leon Dreisaitl a good little bit of attention there towards the end of game four. And of course he ended up missing game five because of that. But his team won, so I feel like part of that was brushed a little bit under the rug. But now we get to see if he does it again or if he gets to focus more on hockey. Would it be an issue? If he did decide to do something again and get a suspension, obviously this is a guy that plays a lot of minutes for the Golden Knights and actually in the 24 minutes a night that he's got, uh, things have had varying degrees of success. The second round didn't look particularly great, but he is a guy that plays almost 25 minutes a night and has played 20 minutes in all 10 postseason games for Vegas. While his numbers might not look great, particularly like I said in the Edmonton series, a lot of that was on the PK. And in fact, he had something like uh, seven goals against in the series and had a goal differential that was not good but five of those out of the seven were on the PK against Connor McDavid so basically in the 15 minutes that McDavid was out there and Petrangelo was out there McDavid ended up getting five power play goals or being part of five power play goals so of course that's going to be something that's not ideal but realistically you also know that you know you're not going to be playing a McDavid level player every single round and also you can see that if Petrangelo does struggle on the PK, it could be an issue. They throw him out there a lot. He led the team in time on Iceberg and played on the man disadvantage. Um, in the regular season, it is the second most or second highest average player for time on ice per game played on the man disadvantage here in the postseason as well. So with Dallas being good on the power play, you have to watch out for that. And when you realize that the Stars are really good at scoring on the penalty uh, run penalties considering that in the regular season they were like fifth for power play percentage and in the playoffs I think they're also fifth coming into the series I am really excited to see if Petrangelo can get back to being a good player because he is a good player he's underrated I know a lot of people think that maybe he might have fallen off a bit since he left the Blues and went over to Vegas but this was a pretty good year for him and he is again a guy that they trust a lot they're going to use him a lot for the minutes and is also a guy that could help his team out offensively you look at the fact that he has seven points in 10 games played all assists 
Five of those being primary, that could be a key for Vegas getting a W, him being able to facilitate offensive scoring for his teammates, just helping his team out again by doing a little bit of everything in this round. As for how Dallas could get a med, the answer is kind of simple, Max Domi. Now, I don't exactly know um, if or how much they should play against each other at different points in the series or how much they will, I'm not exactly sure, but I do know they'll see each other and there are other guys that Dallas could throw out to probably irritate Petrangelo, but Max seems like a great candidate for this considering he has been really getting under people's skin. I don't want people to think that Domi is just this scrub that can't play hockey because he is a good hockey player um, that I think has started to get more of a reputation lately for being a little bit of that gritty type player. Um, and while he's also had a bit of grit to him during his career, he's a good player. But that being said, I definitely think he's one of those guys that could really get there and get a good result for Dallas if they're pushing for that. So for Peter DeBoer, the head coach of the Stars, we'll get to see if maybe he wants to play around with that, see if he can get the result he wants. Um, and maybe a one-game suspension or more for Petrangelo, who just had an outburst in the second round. But we will see. And for the third topic here is will fatigue be a factor? The NHL's regular season is absolutely brutal. I don't think there's many sports that compare to it in terms of physicality and the length of play. If you're a rugby fan, league fan, so Union or Rugby League, you probably are familiar with that. I am a fan of the NRL, so I know that that's like a 20-some game season. So they have, you know, very, probably the most physical sport in the world that is, you know, a bigger name sport they have the physicality but they don't play the 80 some games that hockey players do and i think the fatigue is going to be a big thing to talk about here especially for a player like miro haskinen that's a guy you got to watch out for he has averaged over 28 minutes per night and that is more than all the 332 players that have played in the postseason that are not goalies while having nine points in 13 games as a defenseman he's been through it he's had to play all and people will probably say oh well he played 40 some minutes that night that the Wild and the Stars ended up going on a really long game in overtime. Yes, he did, but he also got hurt in another game in the middle, early part of May, where he played 11 minutes. So in general, though, he still played a ton, a ton of minutes here on the, you know, for the Stars, I guess you should say, in a top role for them. So I really would see if Miro has a bad series, could that be because he's just tired? As for some other guys, uh, you're not really looking at some big, big minutes for forwards, especially. Yeah, I think Jack Eichel leads both teams for average time on ice per game played for both sides in their forward group in the first two rounds of the playoffs, something like 19 and a half minutes. You're not going to see them you know, probably go out there like a McDavid, McKinnon, a Marner and play 24 minutes a night for the, you know, the average of the series, unless there is some crazy long overtime game. But yeah, I think that that's going to be one of those things where Miro is kind of the focal point here. But also in terms of teams benefiting from not being as exhausted, I'd say Vegas benefits more than Dallas. Yes, Vegas has had some overtime games, but Dallas had that pretty long game against the Wild uh, while also having to play more games. They played 13 games through two rounds where Vegas has got to play 11. And while I'm not going to say that, you know, I think that Vegas is so much more rested, I guess, than Dallas. Every game that you don't have to play is a game that you don't have to risk injury. More time you get to heal up and more time you get to prepare. So I do think in this category, we could see fatigue play a factor in Dallas's um, loss and, and Vegas's benefit. So we're going to have to see it there. And if the series ends early, maybe we could see why that could be an issue. As for the final talking point, is how does revenge factor in this series? There are two talking points here that I want to talk about and bring up. The first is Dallas, obviously, knocking out Vegas back in the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs in the conference final. And that ended up being the, you know, kind of the last big time that the Stars have had since then, whereas Vegas had another run the year after where they lost to Montreal in the third round, basically the conference final. And for Vegas, I think that was more crushing because it was back-to-back -back years that they really could have gone on to win Stanley Cups or at least appear in them. That would have been three in a very short span. And now we're looking at them not being in a Stanley Cup final since their inaugural season, and that's kind of the problem. And another talking point here, before I kind of explain why I think that this could be heated, is the fact that Dallas's head coach, Peter DeBoer, also coached for Vegas literally last season before being fired for not making the playoffs this year. So now having said that, let's kind of talk about why I think this could be heated. For the first point, I think that I read recently that the Golden Knights have had six players from their original six, or not the original six, their original 2018 Stanley Cup 
finalist team on their roster and they've been able to stay there the whole time. So clearly they've got guys that remember 2018. They remember some of their losses, the loss to the Shark and the, or the Sharks in the first round and this loss to Dallas. They probably want to get a little bit of revenge for this Dallas team. It looks, you know, significantly different than what they did a few years ago but they would like to be able to say, you took away our trip to the big dance. We're going to do so for you and for them. I think that's going to be really, really fun to see as Vegas is a team that's been really good for a while and they would like to get back there. And then Dallas looking to be the villain for Vegas fans yet again. And I am excited for that. But I will say for the DeBoer thing, I think that's also interesting too because He's got to be just crazy motivated, right? I mean, he was in charge of Vegas for three years. They went to the playoffs twice. They won two division titles, and they were to the doorstep of the Stanley Cup final two times. Again, losing to Dallas in 2020, losing to Montreal in 2021. That one really stinks because I think that's just one you want to put behind you forever if you could. Uh, but then they almost won the President's Trophy as well. They tied with Colorado, but Colorado ended up getting rewarded. So you can see there's a lot to be happy about. But then injuries come and things just don't work out the way they want. They barely miss out on the wild card. I think Dallas actually was the team that made sure they didn't get in last year, which would be even more fuel to the fire. So he ends up getting fired and then he ends up in Dallas. Now he's got a chance to go to the Stanley Cup final while literally beating the team that said, you're not good enough. We don't want you here right now anymore. You're going to have to leave. That's just like a movie script right there. And while I'm sure it wasn't as dramatic in Vegas, I'm sure they kept it professional. It would be kind of nice to say that the team that decided you weren't in a spot where they felt like you could help them anymore is going to say leave. And then you go out there and say, well, I am actually good enough on this team and I'm going to get them to the Stanley Cup final. So I think you have two really juicy factors for a revenge story for either side, a lot of motivation here, more so probably for Vegas because you have six guys that were there uh, and experienced that loss as compared to DeBoer being just one guy, but we will see, and now I have to talk about who I'm going to be picking for this series and why. I will be picking the Dallas Stars in seven games. I really could see this one being a riskier pick, and I worry that the Stars could be pretty tired after two tough rounds, but they've got a better situation in it in Ottinger, and while I think Vegas has got a better blue line or more names that are more known, well-known, I think that Dallas has got an underrated blue line, far from being a league bad or one of the worst blue lines in the league, and I think people are kind of sleeping on them. I do like what they've got going on with their forward group. Yes, you are worried a little bit that if the top line doesn't produce, there could be problems, and I do think Vegas would be more suited for their top line not producing, but we will have to see, and I would say that I'm going to roll with this upset here, even though I really do feel rough about picking them after I just picked an upset for Edmonton in the second round against Vegas and was wrong, but we will have to see who are you picking for this series and why. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below and also in how many games. Anyway, everybody, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody stay safe. Have a great night. And you go of all kill, right? Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.